Hello kids, Patrick Livingston of easyanimalstodraw.com and today we're going to be drawing this animal. The Pomeranian. Pomeranian combines a tiny body, no more than seven pounds, and a commanding big dog demeanor. So we start our Pomeranian with a circle for the hips, dotting it in lightly. As always, it's more important to get the position and the size of the circle right more than the exact to be able to draw a perfect circle. Perfect circle is not the it's fun to practice your circles and to get a certain amount of pleasure from getting them more and more correct, more and more circle circle like. But it's not the most critical thing in terms of drawing in your drawing guide. So now we move forward to the circle for the shoulders and chest. And as you can see, this circle is a little bit bigger, but quite close because of the luxurious furry coat of the Pomeranian and it being quite a compact dog with small legs. Finally, the circle for the head which overlaps the circle of the shoulders and the chest. Dotting it in lightly before drawing it in more confidently once we're pretty sure that it's a reasonable circle. It only has to be a reasonable circle. Don't get hung up on the perfection of your circles, unless that's what you want out of life, in which case, have at it, why not? So now the triangles for the ears, as a guide to drawing, drawing in the ears, and we're going to further subdivide the circle for the head as a guide as to where we're going to position the eyes and the nose. Now we join up the two circles and we'll, by joining up the two circles we'll get a, we complete our drawing guide for the body and we can be so we can be assured that the proportions of the body are approximately correct. And now the legs, fairly simple legs on a, simple guides for the legs on a Pomeranian And now just a, a guide for the tail, and we're, we're pretty much done for the guide. Now we start the drawing proper, and the, the guide is, will help us decide on the correct position for the eyes. You can see the, the eyes of a Pomeranian are quite large compared to the size of the head, quite large and expressive. And we'll be doing the classical thing of drawing in a dark central pupil, um, a paler iris, greyish iris, and leaving a small spot of white to indicate that the, the surface of the eyeball is quite shiny and reflective, quite wet and glossy. I don't know if it's true for dogs, but a human actually secretes three different kinds of fluid to keep the eye moist. So there we have our Pomeranian's eyes. Pomeranians are easily trained and make fine watchdogs and perky pets for families with children. in the nose and you can see that the at this point just with just the nose and the eyes it almost has a cartoon-like character 
with large eyes. Now drawing in the muzzle and the mouth with a slightly jagged line to indicate the the, the coat, the, the furriness of the coat. It's quite a quite a thick luxurious coat. Now with the same, I've changed pencil. I'm using a heavier pencil because when a dog has this quite heavy coat, I find it's better to use the heavier pencil, the thicker pencil, to make more substantial marks. So I, I find that this gives a better feeling for the, the rougher coat. The reason for that rough coat is that the Pomeranian is a miniaturized version of the Spitz type sleigh dogs of the Arctic. And you can imagine what kind of coat you need to be a sleigh dog in the Arctic. The breed is named for Pomerania, which is an area between Poland and Germany. Well, say between it's it enjoins both, it, it's part of both. And hundreds of years ago that the Pomeranian was bred down from its sleigh pulling ancestor. Hard to imagine a Pomeranian pulling a sleigh, but its ancestors were much bigger and they did. And their original name was a, a Zwerg Spitz. Zwerg Spitz which is clearly a German name. Quite a few dog breeds arose in Germany, the Dachshund, the Rottweiler, the Great Dane. So back to the back to the drawing enough about the history of the Pomeranian. You see I'm using little short strokes with my thicker pencil to give that feeling of that thick sleigh dog coat. Again, very hard to imagine this cute little dog being a sleigh dog, but its ancestors undoubtedly were. Popularity of the Pom is largely due to Queen Victoria, who became smitten with the breed while visiting Italy. And she brought the dog back to, to England, and of course when a queen Loves a dog, really helps its popularity. Now I'm removing the, the drawing guide now, my favorite part of the drawing, because it's quite relaxing, just going over the guide with the rubber, and it transforms the image, in my opinion, when the scaffolding or the structure of the drawing guide is removed, leaving just the, the dog itself, so to speak. It's relaxing because you don't have to focus or concentrate on anything except removing the, the guide with the rubber. And even if you do make, you will inevitably make some mistakes, you'll, you'll remove part of the drawing. That's just inevitable. There's no way around that. Um, but the solution to that is just you go back in and you, you redraw the parts that have disappeared. And Generally, even if it's even if you've rubbed out the line, there will be some trace that will act as a guide. Some trace. Well, you, you're unlikely to have rubbed it out entirely. And as you can see, around the, the lines are still there; they're just too faint. So we go back and give them the strength that they should have. And that looks 
looks like we're coming up to finishing the drawing. A few final touches and it's time to shade it in. Now you notice what I'm doing with the iris is I'm darkening the top of the iris to indicate that it's in shadow and leaving the bottom of the iris lighter where it's catching the light. This gives the eyeball a three-dimensional look. And the Pomeranian being... This Pomeranian is pale in colour and so I'm just very lightly drawing in an indication of the, the coat. And if you notice, I'm being careful to keep the, the direction of the marks in the direction of the fur. Shading in the the ear. A darker inner ear. Now the nose. Once you've drawn a few dogs' noses, you you'll notice that they're all pretty much the same shape. All dogs come from the wolf, which I find particularly amusing when we come to the smaller toy dogs. To imagine that their ancestors were once wild, large wolves. Just imagine this little Pomeranian saying, my great, 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 granddad was a wolf. So watch out. I'm sure they have that temperament. Of course, it's because wolves were, are pack animals. They live in a social order that uh, dogs can form an attachment to humans because they, they're not solitary animals. Much harder to keep a pet tiger as they're relatively solitary animals. When Queen Victoria brought her Pomeranian back to England, she became quite a serious breeder and exhibitor of poems. And at the 1891 Crufts Dog Show, Crufts Dog Show is the most important dog show in England, Victoria showed six of her Pomeranians. And one of her favourites, Windsor Marco, won first place in the breed. Victoria is credit for, credited for reducing the palm size down from about 30 pounds to their current toy stature. Some other historical figures that were known palm owners include Maria Antoinette, Emile Zola, the writer, and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, the famous composer. Now, this video is speeded up twice the speed, so when you're drawing your own Pomeranian, don't hesitate to pause the video from time to time. And if you want to make these little, these, these very light marks consistently, you need to learn to hold the pencil very softly in your hand very lightly. You can practice that independently on a single piece of paper. And don't, for, don't forget you can head over to easyanimalstodraw.com. Just Google it. 
where you'll find some drawing guides for your Pomeranian, which you can download. Just putting a little shading under to anchor the dog to the surface, stop it looking like it's floating. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe and smash the bell to get notifications of future videos. And uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Until the next time, bye-bye.